it's hard. It's easier said than done because we all have our moments where you 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 fall in those low moments and you just kind of mm-hmm. what next? Or you have a day where you just wake up and you feel like garbage from the start, <laughs> and it just seems to carry on throughout the day. And I keep thinking to myself, at least I'm here to face it, because it could be way worse. Or I could be in a hospital, or hooked up to something, or have another event where I'm getting shocked, or laying on the floor here, waking up like what in the world happened type of deal. What's up there, everyone? Yell is here, the uh, founder of the Heart Warrior Project, uh, a fellow sudden cardiac arrest survivor, and your host here on the podcast. In this episode, I had I had the pleasure to welcome a guest that, I mean, it's been a while since we talked to each other, so it was really fun. But um, the first guest, actually, that was here on the podcast, and that is none other than cardiac arrest survivor and heart warrior, Jamie Bowden. So I invited Jamie because um, I have the idea of doing every year, you know, that I talked with someone a year later to have them on the show again to do a checkup episode. Uh, I mean, anyone who wants to, of course. And since Jamie was the first guest, he is also the first one to do this checkup episode. I really couldn't have wished for uh, someone better than Jamie to be the first guest and to also do this episode. Uh, because in the first episode, he shared so many great insights and here as well. Uh, he's not alone, uh, just a really fun person to talk to and just an amazing person, but he does truly share a lot of great insights for other survivors listening. So, I uh, yeah, I'm excited about these episodes and I do hope that you will find some meaning, support or something else out of this, out of this episode. Now, to find any of the resources mentioned by me or by Jamie, as we did share uh, quite a few, then check out the show notes located in the description of this episode. Or you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for Jamie. With that, please enjoy this checkup episode with cardiac arrest survivor and heart warrior, Jamie Bowden. Jamie, welcome back here to the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. It's, I mean, it's been a year since we talked. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me again, Yellis. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, yeah, it'd be a year in November, I think, but we recorded around the same time. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So about a year. So exactly. It, pretty much, which it went by really fast, but at the same yeah. time, it feels like it's, I'm like, wow, already a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Actually, I mean, I think the idea of having people that I talk to uh, about a year past you know it's cool to do this every year with someone that i had on the show like a check-in which is a bit the idea here of this conversation that we're having right to see how things have been with you because i'm super curious to catch up and plus as sudden cardiac survivors we a a year is a big deal right because we celebrate our birthdays and you know anniversary so i think a year it's a great time to catch up and see where we're all both at you know but yeah i'm i'm ex, i'm excited i'm looking forward to this so i think it's a good thing and it's healthy <laughs> to get yeah it is a connection it is. again because i'm sure i think about some of my old stuff i talked about those things some of uh, have changed maybe some haven't but you know at least i can kind of update where I'm, I'm at myself too <laughs> that makes sense all right yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah so yeah um so let me throw a first question at you you know to get this conversation started if you had to describe the last year uh in one sentence what would it be uh, it can be more than a company than a sentence right but <laughs> yeah it's a challenging though for sure i think this year has been the most challenging How come? Uh, as far as like for me and some of the things I've been through in the year, um, opposed to like the first year out, uh, that was more affected by the cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. The things over the last year is caused by the long-term cardiac arrest where I'm starting to see limitations and some things that I'm just not going to get back into doing because I, you know, it just physically and emotionally can't. You know, and um, I don't know if, if you want me to go, go in. Like what I'm talking about is kind of like um, I did have yeah, a I'm second. Curious. I had a second event. Yeah, last year I had a second event when I was at work. You had a shock. Um, so 
I well, see, I was confused because I wasn't sure if I got the shock or not, but my device charged to get a shock as it was pacing me. I regulated back down on my own, oh. but the problem was I was at 260 heart wow. rate for more than five seconds, so I was already getting the feeling of going to pass out. And remember, my first when I had my original one, I was driving. Yeah. I was behind the wheel again when this one happened. Man. And I, I had the feeling of, like, it almost felt like passing out, but you could tell something was wrong in your chest because I, I think it's just natural when you have something wrong with your heart. When something's wrong, the first thing you think of is like, okay, what's going on in there? Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. I remember pulling off to the side of the road and I was exhausted because I had this just adrenaline pump go through me. Wow. And I'm like, oh my God, something happened. Like something happened. Like I could tell. Like yeah. it wasn't uh, anxiety. It wasn't. Uh, I didn't eat enough, and I had bl- low blood sugar. And it, it was like something happened in there. So I didn't want to sing. <laughs> so I just I wanted to be home. So I just drove home. Took my time. I called my wife Alma, and I said, "I think something happened. I'm okay, but I'm going home." And she's like, "I'm coming home." There was no second guessing, obviously, with what she went through. She's like, I'm not leaving you alone. Came home, sent a message through the receiver at, by the bed, called the doctor's office, and they called me back and they said, uh, let's do another one. Sent another report. And she sat down and she started, to, when I sat down and started talking, she's like, so explain what happened. I did. And she's like, I can see exactly the second that it happened. Mm-hmm. You were at 260, your device kicked in, and it, paces you know as well as defibrillates it'll also see where your body's going if it can regulate you down right and she's like so basically you were like a millisecond from having a full-blown shock your device charged which means it ran its course and i said oh what does that mean and she goes well what i'm gonna do is contact the cardiologist and you'll get a call soon and they called me back and they said you need to make an appointment So I went in, I think this was a Wednesday, so I went in on Friday, and that's when they started talking about the potential of an ablation. Mm. They were more encouraging to try doing the medicine first. Mm -hmm. Um, I think as I've been learning more and more about my first cardiac arrest, that I did have some issues with, um, you know, PVCs, Mm -hmm. going into AFib. And I think my heart did take a beating during that time. And I probably had some issues prior to that that I didn't really realize what was going on. So the ablation was still kind of aggressive for the doctor. To He said, if we can't get it controlled by medicine, then we're going to have no choice. But if I can control it with medicine and work on it from your end, because obviously stress, anxiety encourages your heart to feel these motions of, you know, the PVCs becoming, because we all have PVCs in us but some people don't have the effect of them where it'll put you in AFib so like for me when I take a series of a- uh, PVCs um, you know it's kind of I always tell people it's like when you feel that rush in your heart when you have nerves or something it kind of goes away like for me my heart just goes like through the ceiling right um, so I actually ended up spending a week in a hospital getting a soda load loading so they could figure out what dosage I could handle because of course one of the side effects to uh, having soda low is you could go on cardiac arrest <laughs> so they started the IV this is crazy I had by the way five day stay of I had soda low too but they oh. just gave it to me and they were like yeah off you go I didn't yeah, have to spend you're, the- you're not the only one oh okay. I've heard that before from people when they talk about it so I don't know if it depends on where you're at or what the procedure is with the doctor, but um, I had to stay. I checked in early Monday and I didn't leave until Friday. So I was there for a full four, was that four nights? So, um, and of course, that was my first day in the hospital after everything happened in 2020. So, uh, you know, it rehashed everything for everybody, my, you know, my family. And then, of course, my kids were like, are you okay? You know, and um, it was really weird because I spent, the whole time hooked up to the monitor and I could see when the PVCs would come because it'd be like a red little like dot going across and the doctor came in he's an early bird and so am I so he'd show up at like five in the morning and I'd already be up usually reading or doing something and we'd have this conversation and he was sitting there looking at the monitor and he brought up like my work and what were you doing when this happened and everything and then I remember if we started talking he said you released more PVCs 
than you probably have in the whole time you've been here so far when you started talking about your job. And I was like, oh. really? He goes, yeah. He goes, you really seem to ha-. And he goes, and that's the thing. Everybody kind of has there are certain things that can trigger PVCs. It could be um, anger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it could be okay. when you get sad. It could be just that feeling of, you know, oh, you, things are out of control. And eventually it affects your heart, you know. And so that was like my first conversation where I was thinking like, oh, I think things are going to change in my life here, you mm-hmm. know. And I was already at work for a year and a half after the first event, and I was struggling, just struggling every day to get through a day. I was so tired at the end of the days when I had a moment just to sit. I was like, oh, you know, just, I I think, and you know, we've talked about, I think people, when you talk about fatigue from a cardiac event, it is like a fatigue that you'll never, you can't explain it. It just, it's, yeah, true. You could literally fall asleep standing up. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. people know, are like, oh, really, you should really just bad. sleep a little bit more or rest a little bit more. But it's like, it's yes. an ins- it's a fatigue that's so deep. It's so deep. It's like your soul is completely depleted of energy. It's, yeah, after my cardiac arrests, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the fatigue that you feel. And it's weird too, because you're like me, you're active. So yeah. I, I, for me to feel like, and I, I remember the your podcast you did with the cardiac, I forgot her name, but the nurse. Oh yeah, and she Angela, was like how yeah, you feel like you have that, and yeah, you have that tug like on your back, like somebody's pulling against you when you're trying to go forward. Yeah, and I, it's like this restriction that you just you're like, why am I so tired? Why am I? Why am I having these? Like I would be so exhausted, and I was looking at it's only Wednesday. <laughs> like, yeah, I got three more days of this of work, you know, going on. So um, it's exhausting. So the solo. Yeah, everything went fine in the hospital. I didn't need anything. It actually was kind of a wake up call because they said I could walk around mm. in the mornings or whenever I wanted around like the and it was the area where heart patients come from recovery. So it's patients who had sudden cardiac arrest, patients who had open heart surgery, and I'm I, I, I'm not trying to be nosy with people. I don't I'm already uncomfortable. So I don't, but I've just seen and hearing people who are coming out of these major heart events and. It was kind of it was a wake up call because I go I don't want to be here, <laughs> you know I don't want to have to be back here unless something you know out of my control. So um, I did eventually end up stepping away from my job. I had really no choice in the matter because I just I had no confidence to go back. Um, and, and again, this was something I've been twenty five years at the wow. you know, working for the this. So True. and I loved yeah. I had a passion for my job. You know I really did. I, I it was. And the reason why I meant the word challenging is because um, dealing with being on medicine, that's a challenge in with itself. Being on soda low, it's like any beta blocker. It changes everything in your life. You are, you go from tiredness to upset stomach to um, dizziness. And, you know, just all these things you're, and I'm on a, I take 180 milligrams twice a day. So I'm on a very decent amount. It's 300 and what's that? It's over 300 milligrams per day. So wow. I'm on a a good dosage of it, you know. So um, I really struggled with the idea of leaving work. And I felt like I was losing an identity. And um, I thankfully yeah. I was really already in therapy. So I was talking to a therapist through all this. And it went from a range of anger mm. to sadness. <laughs> and I, 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 last time I, we spoke, I... I specifically said at the end, like, I don't want sudden cardiac arrest to des- to describe or control my narrative. Like, I didn't want it to be what, I, like, I want to control it more than I want it to control me. And at that point, I thought, like, it was winning. Because I'm like, I'm going to leave something I've been doing. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself because I don't know if I even, am I able to do a job? Because every job comes with stress and, you know, the if yeah. we all knew a, a happy place to work, we would be there, right? Where you, you know, so um, it was very challenging to myself. And I think that was the difference was the first year or two, I was trying to work on myself and work on family, work on with Alma the, being a co-survivor and having to go through her doing what she had to do to keep me alive. And this last year was a lot about me yeah. finding the new the new me and being okay with it and i thought to myself you know what if leaving my job gives me a better quality of life 
I'll figure things out. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm a faithful person. I believe a lot of this stuff is happening to me because of the God kept me alive and helped me get through what I should have been easily gone from. And it'll, it'll be okay. But I have to make myself believe that. And that was hard. It wasn't easy by any means. I really struggled with it. And yeah. last July was my official, like, it was, I, I'm like done. I went in, I emptied out my desk and, you know, and it was kind of bittersweet, but it felt good. Like, I really did feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and it's also kind of triggered a little bit of me too. Like, I want to get more involved and get out there and kind of help others that are going through what we've been through and you know, promote uh, having CPR training and ADs around and That's cool. not only having them around, but knowing how to use them and knowing yeah, yeah, that yeah. Yeah. we're the result. Like we're yeah. the reason why those things are there because we are allowed to continue with life, you know? Yep. And sometimes when you hear that, people respond to it differently and they're more invested to want to get trained. And the fact that you might be most likely doing it to a loved one more so than a stranger, it's even that much more important because you want to feel like you can at least do your best to help instead of feeling like, I don't know what to do. Like I'm watching, you know, I'm going to, somebody's there lifeless that I, I want to help, but I have no clue what to do. So um, I want to get more involved in that now. And I feel ready to, because I was, honestly, I didn't know if I could even sit through a CPR class without having hmm. like ideas of freaking out because... Mm-hmm. I'm seeing exactly what was being done to me, even though I do not remember it, but I know what happened, you know, and I thought to myself, man, if I sat through a CPR class about a, a, month, a year ago, I probably would have freaked out and left. I would have been like, I can't do this. <laughs> Where now I, I feel like, okay. Been, I think for me as well, it could, I actually wanted to do with the Heart Warrior Project, like organize some CPR trainings, you know, with the Red Cross, for mm-hmm. example, here in Belgium. But I'm also super curious to see how that would be because I think it might be quite triggering, actually, in a way, to see that, yeah. Um, But you're right. You're 100% right that it is an important skill that truly does save life, uh, lives, and we are beautiful examples of the results of someone being able to do CPR and of, uh, you know, AEDs working uh you know and the result that he can bring so yeah it's cool to hear that absolutely you and, with that. and from uh, in my situation i was like the one where I, everything was stacked against me where i was driving yeah you know in front of my family having to get the scene situated because even when like the fire department had to come out they had to like block off traffic to get around the scene and you know i always think back to that moment where you know, Alma's training kicked in. You know, she just kind of naturally knew what to do. She knew and CPR. It, she knew CPR, yeah. And I wow. mean, she never yeah. had obviously had to use it, but she knew it. But it all came to her, like yeah. how to do it. And, and not only that, my first first responder was the police department. And there's a lot of police departments that they don't equip their officers with AED. Yes. Yeah. And if that wasn't on the scene... Those couple minutes before the fire department had a chance to start really taking care of me could have been the matter of us having this conversation or me even being able to have a conversation about it yep. in general, you know, because I, I I went through a pretty long, it was like 14 to 16 minutes without supplied oxygen. So I was already pushing the envelope of, mm-hmm. are you going to have all your skills? And, and I do notice things are different memory wise, slower wise, but that... I'm, you know, I'm working on, but like 14, to six, it's a long time yeah, when you yeah. think about it, right? That's a long time. To, it's very similar to people who have like a concussion, some kind of a, a brain trauma that really you can catch some things up and then there's just some things you're just going to have to new, have a new system <laughs> in a sense for memory. And, and, and that was one of the things that kind of woke me up to with my job is I've always had a pretty decent memory where I didn't have to take a ton of notes or I could just do like a shorthand and I'd be like, I could sit down an hour or two hours and I would just know it. And I'd have notes and I'm looking at it and it was like, at the end of the day, it was like I saw it for the first time. <laughs> I'm like, what? and I was just, I'm going to say it because it's, it's typical for guys. We push through. We don't like to say anything. We don't like to show weakness. 
Um, I was afraid to talk to, you know, Alma at the end of the day because I, I didn't want her to freak out every time I went to work that I was struggling. And I was also dealing with, um, you know, the PTSD of just getting out in general. So there was times where I literally would just, I would want to hide. And I was getting an upset stomach and I'd be like, going to the, I have to go, I'm running in the bathroom and I sit down and I'm like, I don't even feel like I have to go for it. I'm just like, I'm so wrenched up that I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and I didn't realize how hard that year and a half of returning to work was until I had the cardiac event last year. Mm-hmm. And I'm 100% convinced that that was because of what I was going through. Mm-hmm. Um, I was probably pushing the limits yeah. in order to have these PVCs, the, this just complete nervousness that I was going through and fear that it in result did go to me having another cardiac event and Mm -hmm. like the doctor said it once (laughs) twice you don't want to push the third and i was also driving again and i and i did go about a block and a half driving where i don't remember driving because i was like wavering in that going unconscious feeling and i remember going back to that location and seeing how far i drove and i saw kids running on a sidewalk a bike guy on a bike riding his bicycle on a bike path and i go what would have stopped me from hitting one of them or ended up in somebody's living room Mm -hmm. you know and that really scared it it scared me more than the first event because i remember everything the the first event was traumatizing because i know what happened but this one i remember what it felt Mm -hmm. like and it just Mm -hmm. it's it literally scared me to the point where i was like something's got to change i need to make some decisions some hard decisions And I want to be here for my kids and I want to be healthy and I don't want them to be afraid that if they get in the car with me or something happens that, oh, daddy's going to fall over and get a shock, you know, or I'm just going to be this. And that's not what they want either. You know, your cardiologist certainly does not want you to, they want that as a safety net, not to keep you alive on a daily basis, you know. Um, So it, it was Sotolo is definitely because I just had a, a a year checkup and everything came back really good. So I don't okay, need the good. ablation right now. The Sotolo is it. doing its job. No, I, I need the Sotolo, but I don't need the ablation. So I can stay on the medicine because you they he chose Sotolo because it's an uh, it's been around forever and it's yeah. a good mm-hmm. trial base that there's no long term. Um, you know, there's nothing that it does that they've seen. I think it's been out since like the '60s. It's been around for a long time. So he's confident that. And he was honest. He said, you're probably going to be on it for the rest of your life. Maybe not at this dosage. He goes, ideally, we'd love to trim it down at some point um, when we feel comfortable with that. But you're going to be on it. So why would we want to give you something that's a little more risky, knowing that you might be on it for the, you know, let's say, hopefully a long time. But, you know, 40, 50, whatever years it is, it's, there. you know, there's no issues. But um, I was really thankful that it helped and I didn't have to think about not that I mean I know you've had an ablation I mean people do have them so it's not like um they're not being done but I really thought like I don't know if I'm ready to go through having to deal with that right now I'm still trying to adjust living on medicine for the rest of my days and having you know dealing with those side effects um and leaving my job at the same time all this was piling on and piling on I'm like oh I'm gonna have to go (laughs) go through this but then it was such a nice feeling Often this actually is the case yeah. with with us, right? That something happens and there's a lot of things that we have to decide then. You know, you get another yes. cardiac arrest or like the event that you had and then all of a sudden so many more things often have to change slightly. Uh, so we do often, if we deal with something, it's often like a pile of things at the same time. Uh, so, wow, that's yeah. a lot of stuff yeah. that you had to go through, man. That's a lot. It, it it was and and I'll be honest with you the therapy faith mm-hmm. always helps I always encourage somebody to whatever it is you believe in find it and, and invest in that time to have that one on one because it truly does help yeah um, and I obviously family is always supportive because they're there with you through it when you know they know what's going on but I I remember going into I had to wear the uh, monitor for the forty eight hours and going in getting that put on me. And I just started thinking, I'm like, man, I'm back to this again. Like, that was my first thought. Like, uh, But I'm like, no, at least I'm going to try and get some answers. So 
Yeah. I, you know, I did the echo and I, I'm laying there moving all these positions and put, you know, doing all this stuff. And I kept thinking to myself, well, that's, this is my life now. I'll probably have to do this if not every year, at least every other year, uh, unless something else happens, of course, you know, and, but I, something clicked when I was in the hospital. And I go, you know, at least I'm here to, to face these things opposed to not being here, yeah. you know, um, because I, I believe the stuff we go through kind of equips us to go through anything um, because <laughs> yeah. you really do, have, like you said, there's a lot thrown on your plate at one time and a lot of decisions that you have to make. There's limitations that you feel and, you know, I'm older than you, but not, I'm not ancient by any means, but to be, <laughs> if I would have thought at your age, middle age that I would be going through this stuff, I'd be like, you're crazy. I'm doing all the, I'm working out, I'm doing all the right things. That's not going to happen to me. And now I look at it like, you know what? I'm going to use that same motivation that I did to try and keep myself in shape in those years to just keep doing it beyond those years, just in a different way, mm. you know? And it's hard. It's easier said than done because we all have our moments where you, you, you fall in those low moments and you just kind of, mm -hmm. what next? Or you have a day where you just wake up and you feel like garbage from the start. <laughs> And it just seems to carry on throughout the day. And I keep thinking to myself, at least I'm here to face it. Because it could be way worse. Or I could be in a hospital or hooked up to something or have another event where I'm getting shocked or laying on the floor here, waking up like what in the world happened type of deal. But it's really hard to fall back on that sometimes because it is very challenging to yeah. just your own natural will to keep going not that you feel like oh this is you know just the idea of like man i'm just almost feel like i'm being pushed to the limit at times so falling back on the word challenging that's what it was like for this year there was a lot of those moments where i was just like is it going to give me more stress to not be working is it going to give me more stress to feel like i felt like i just gave up and it's like well no i i didn't because i didn't ask for any of this mm. it's happened and the fact that I went from 2020 when I had it to 2022 with no events, I was one of the ones where they were still not even sure what even had happened. And then when I started getting more educated on the whole idea of PVCs and how that affects going into AFib and the fact that when somebody does have an AFib event where they do go into sudden cardiac arrest, PVCs are like poison sometimes to the heart. Like it really will make that heart just go into a point where it just locks up mm. and you're in, you're, you're going like that's, mm. you know, so, and that's where they don't want, they don't want me to be at. They don't want any, when they, when I heard the 260 number of my heart rate, my literally my heart dropped. I was like, wow. Like I could see like, oh, so we were near 200. <laughs> you just blew right by that. <laughs> You know, you're just amping it. And that's where, like, I I was hearing the words where they felt like um, the lower chamber of my heart might have had a little damage because of some of the, you know, that's not healthy for your heart to take that stress. And I started thinking to myself, like, I don't remember ever hearing that word damage. Like, where did that come from? You know, and I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure they told me it probably like three or four times. But you know how you are in the first year or two. You're kind of in la la land. You're just like, hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm alive. Thank you. You know, and it's like, yeah damage yeah like i really like something like you know and he's like well listen i'm not telling you like you're not going on the transplant list like your heart is healthy but uh -huh. yes that is stress to your heart like you are every time you have some kind of event like that your heart is a muscle yeah. it can strain it can you know you can have tears and he goes i'm just thankful that you still have a high functioning heart for what you've kind of already been through that's encouraging for your long term you know and i said okay well i i I'm stuck on the word damage. I keep thinking about damage. I'm like, oh, you know, but um, th that is primarily why the word challenging comes to mind to me because it, it's been a lot mm. three, almost I'll be four years out next year, but thinking like the first year was a lot of emotions and mm -hmm. that first year anniversary was a lot of like, you know, that feeling like, okay, one year down, good. And then that second to third year <laughs> into the part of the fourth year there was a lot more limitations starting and a lot more like okay you did escape the event but there might be some things you're gonna have to deal with you're not just gonna walk away scot-free without having some kind of like I myself had a hard time just adjusting to life of being medicated I, I I mean 
I was I was the type of person, a daily vitamin, maybe an allergy pill, an aspirin here or there if I had a headache. And the fact of the matter that like now when I go somewhere, I have to make sure I have it with me because I got to take it at a certain time. You know, it's like the whole adjustment of, of life. And it's like I had it a sounds so small, pill. but it's actually quite a big adjustment yeah. if you never had to yes. take like chronic medication. Right. And all of a sudden you have to. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a weird thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's also weird for me now to know that my pharmacy, they know me. You know, because I go there every <laughs> exactly, once in a while right? to get my new medication. And yeah, it's a weird yes, thing. And, you sit, and they know what the medicine's for, obviously, your yeah. pharmacist. And they see something, they're like, you yeah. know, they're not going to say anything. But you know, they think like, oh, this yeah. poor guy, they, look, they yeah. look young and they're getting all this heart rate, you know. And it's like, but I do have to say, I kind of look at it like when, when I first started, I get frustrated with it. But now I kind of look at it like, all right, this is kind of like your ICD. Mm-hmm. It's just another thing to help you out. And, you know, especially when you have a good doctor you trust, mm-hmm. you know that this is the things that they're doing to keep you from having the best or keep you to have the best long term care. Because that's the goal is like they just want you. They don't want you in the cardiologist's office all the time. They don't want you to call all the time. They want you to feel like you can live. Now, are there going to be some hurdles? Sure. But there's help out there for that, you know, and. Um, it, uh, restrictions, sure, there's going to be some, but you'll know what they are. I mean, people always say, like, with an ICD, w- do you ever feel like you can't lift weights? And it's like, well, yeah, you can, but you just know your limitations. You know, if something <laughs> hurts or feels wrong, you stop, you know, and if you need a question, you call your doctor and say, hey, uh, I felt this. Because I remember uh, for mine, it was real sensitive for a long time, and I thought, like, maybe something was wrong, and I kind of had this feeling, like, because I know I've heard people say sometimes they shift and move and he said think of all the nerve endings in that area of your chest right and we're sliding this thing right in there right he goes so you're gonna have discomfort at times it's just yeah. and you're like me like my this area is tight so you, you yeah. can it feels like if somebody touches this thing they're oh, like yeah. oh how do you not think that thing's gonna bust out of your skin you know and it's yeah. like i don't know i don't think about thanks now i think about you know <laughs> but anyways i i think like it's a foreign object that we weren't born with that was shoved yeah. in our chest to keep yeah. us alive. Or even on the side, I'm assuming it's probably similar feeling like it's just so different. And that's an adjustment, you know, as well. So um, I forgot where I was going with it. Oh, it, 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 the, the medicine just correlates with that in my book. Like it's just part of what I need to stay healthy and, yeah. and keep me from having any other incidents because... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, you had a shock, so you, you know, like when the device does its job, it's a scary feeling and it's an alerting feeling because the, the ICD will only do something if something's wrong. And, that, and that's a fact, unless it's something wrong with it, like the device itself is wrong. But if it's kicking in to do something to you, it means something's going on in that in your heart that it needs a, a, a jolt, a change, whatever's going on. So there's no like oh, you got a shock for fun, you know, it's it's doing something because it's trying to correct something, you know. And I guess that's part of the reasons why they're such a complicated device because of the fact of what they really truly can do. It, it is, it's a miracle, like what mm. they're capable of doing today with these Honestly, devices. True. Yep. So, yeah, it is. I mean, it, for, every it, time I go and have... You oh, know, like it is still weird for me to see my ICD and I think it's always going to be a bit weird when I see it in the morning. Uh, but now that I had a, you know, a shock, uh, like a couple of months mm-hmm. ago, it was not fun, but at the same time, I feel like I trust it more even now, like, cause I know, yes. okay, it will do its job. It's there for me. It really works. It's again, not fun, but it did its job. And that's pretty good to know that it works actually. It is. And, uh, and yeah, it saved my life. So yeah. And it's a tiny yeah, device can't. in the end, so that's pretty impressive for yeah, all that it can it do. It is very impressive what it can do. Yes. Yeah. I I'm, I feel bad. I can't remember the name of the gentleman that you interviewed from Wales. Um, Oof. Okay. It's in the, how, 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 really, how did he really, look? Um, from Wales. I, he, I, well, the, I'm bad with the place. Uh, was it uh, Ellen? Yeah. Yes, Alan. Alan that, Owen? He had a great idea. Yes, when he talked about naming it, you know, and he said like you kind of build oh, a yeah, relationship with your ICD. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I thought that's a great idea. I haven't named mine yet, but when I heard that, I said, (laughs) yeah. The, the idea of having a relationship with it is, is crucial mm. because it is a part, it goes wherever you go, right? And yeah. it's better to have a relationship where you trust it and know mm-hmm. it's there for right reasons more so than concentrating on the fact of it being there for the wrong reasons. And I, I, true. And I, I do get the fear of people when they talk about the worry of being shocked because you truly might not know when it's coming, but chances are when it's going to do its job, you're going to know because something's going to be wrong or you're going to feel wrong or something you know is happening to you so it's not like you're you should unless you're in a certain environment maybe or something where it's being affected but again that's the the fault of the device doing something that's not supposed to be more so than the idea when it's doing what it's supposed to you know um but it's hard to come to that term at times because you do have a constant tug with that (laughs) that Mm -hmm. idea of like is, what is this thing like really like you know it's uncomfortable at times like, you know sleep I, yeah. i'm a side sleeper and sleeping on my oh, left yeah. is the biggest pain in the world you know and, same same um, but yeah it, it, again though it's like well it's there to save my life yeah. and and that's what's important so i can deal with I, you know one of the things too i um i say i don't know if it's as big because you're on you guys drive on the other side right in, in your cars are they we drive on the right side from here on the right okay so when you're driving on the left, the seatbelt goes right across it, like literally lays right. on it. And I kept thinking to myself. So I'm sitting the at the left sides in my car, but I'm driving at the right side. So I think it's it's, it's the same, right? Okay. In the UK, it's, it's similar. The yeah, it should be. The, yeah, it's just, yeah. Because my seatbelt right. okay. also so, goes the, over it, right across. Yep. Yeah, and it's the weirdest feeling because every yep. once, especially in the summer months, when you're wearing like a t-shirt or something, yeah. you lay that thing across there, and you think to yourself, "Man, if I was to." hit the brakes or get bumped mm. or something and that thing slams and it's going right against that thing yeah. you know and, and that was a question again I, I brought up to my cardiologist i said hey what happens if i am in an accident and i'm okay but i feel like the, he goes you call and you come in mm. it's it's, it's a, that i will do a check from home if everything seems to be okay you're good he goes, but just let us know that's like the you know it's like those are things you think about and then when it, you it really clicks in your mind you're like what am i supposed to do if that happens and it's like well you, you could just call they, they, I'm sure they hear questions of everything, you know, so, um, but again, all those things can get your mind going <laughs> at yeah. times where you, the, the nervousness can come up and the ideas that, you know, and it's like, um, for me having it while driving, I haven't really met a lot of people that experience that same thing. And they think like your natural thing is like, oh, you should be frightened as I'll get out to drive. And it's like, Driving's been challenging, but honestly, when I got in the same car we used to have where I had it, it didn't even click until I thought about it that I even had it in this car because I wasn't a conscious. I had no clue of it, you know. My concern was the first time I drove with the kids and Alma in the car again because then that brought it all back to her like, oh, man, what if, it go, what if this happens again when they're all here, you know. And that was just things that I was building in my mind as part of the whole, you know, PTSD and fear and you know just stuff you're going through because of the result of the trauma you know and um, I'm still working on some things like distance driving and you know traveling things like that but I way better at this point to where I was before Mm -hmm. and again patience with yourself is the key because I could get mad at myself on everything if I really wanted to but then I think Hey, you know, I was able to go out, run errands. I never had a moment where I'm like, just get me the hell out of here. You know, I'm just, I'm just pushing through it and I get home and I, it's like a normal trip, you know, and I go rewind two years ago, Mm. (laughs) that would have been an event and I would have probably been like one stop going home. Mm. I'm good. I pushed myself, you know, and it is time, you know, to get through some of those things. It just takes time and patience. Hey, my apologies for interrupting the conversation. It will just take a moment. If you like the conversation so far and would like to support the Heart Warrior Project, check out the truly awesome looking t-shirts and mugs I created together with an illustrator for fellow Heart Warriors. My goal in creating the t-shirts and mugs was to create something that would help me feel more empowered in the battle that surviving this cardiac arrest has been and, well, still is in many ways to show not only the world, but also myself, the heart warrior that that I have become. And by offering the t-shirts and mugs on the Heart Warrior Project, I too hope that it can help fellow cardiac arrest survivors feel empowered too. 
The mug has become my go-to mug. I I drink my coffee from it every morning and my tea throughout the day. Also, the t-shirts I personally love so much that I ordered more than a couple of them myself. I frequently wear one throughout the day and uh, certainly you can see me wear the t-shirt when I'm out climbing. I can only say this, have a look at the t-shirt designs and the mugs. And if you like what you see, I tell you, you won't regret ordering either the t-shirt, the mug or both of them. Not only will you have a fitting mug and or t-shirt for your current lifestyle, but you'll also be supporting the Heart Warrior project and help me to continue doing this. In the description of this episode, you can find a link that will take you to the page where you can order both the t-shirt and the mug, or you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com to find it. All right, thanks for taking a moment to listen. Now let's return to the conversation. Yeah, and don't underestimate all the things that you've already done, Jamie. You know, I mean, from what you've gone through, what we all go through, you know. We, yeah. Like, we're doing a pretty good, like most of us are doing a really good job on putting things together and, and still living life kind of close to normal. And I, I feel like you're doing that. And that's actually a huge, huge achievement in a lot of ways for all the changes that has happened well, so thank you for that because yeah that means a lot to hear that honestly anytime i can hear that from somebody especially like you and i because we've spoken to each other about where we were like you said a year ago and yep um it, it's having the support system is huge having others that have been through it helps tremendously as well because it can actually i think one of the first things i said to you when we first spoke last year is like you're the first person that can honestly say I know what you feel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've heard it millions of times and I'll go, well, I don't know. I didn't go through it, you know, but it's like you could say yeah. that to me and I could say, you know what? You're right. Absolutely. You're right. We have different situations, maybe post buys because of different things, but we all had sudden cardiac arrest as being the link all like we all passed at one time needed to be resuscitated back to life. And that that's yeah, and the, all the other the stuff right, right there that we all share. We have the ICD, mm -hmm. we, you know, we take medication, different ICD, ones, but yeah. all those changes, we can talk about that because, yeah, I'm going through a similar situation like you and like anyone else dealing with all this. And uh, honestly, support from fellow cardiac arrest survivors has been my number one thing that has helped me. And family, you know, as well, but not on the level, talking to people like you, for example. So, yeah. So, I and mean, I, I want to... Give yeah. you real real quick. I just want to give you some props because of this this project has not only been therapeutic for a lot of people that have watched the videos and we you know obviously see people have viewed them, um, but like for me personally, I've bonded with like three of the two of the others that have done videos. I think one will probably do one in the future. But um, that's awesome. And we kind of have like this camaraderie where it's a friendship and it's also therapy, and you know we can awesome. pretty much ask anything within each other because we've all done it yeah. or been there and you know so and that's because of you starting this that, it, that well, is that's the amazing to it to it all so what you're doing is helping and working in it and i'm i'm blessed to be the first but i'm even more blessed that we have like a friendship now and it, it's it's helping mm. you it helps me it helps the others that i speak to and i think it really does people watch and mm. if anything it opens our eyes to realize that what we're going through you aren't alone and people do need help whether it's they do it on their own and the video helps or it links them to say like you know maybe it is time i go talk to somebody or something but i just want to give you props to that you really really are doing a beautiful thing here so you should be um, proud of that yellis i didn't even really know should. that so that's actually amazing that that <laughs> you know yes came out of this and I mean, I have to say also, like, this project would have been nothing without people like you, like, you know, coming on this project and talking with me. So it's not just me in the end who did this, right? So you're uh, a big reason for all this, too. So oh, I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. That, Thank you. For that I appreciate it. And you made it easy. So when, when <laughs> I saw you post, it was like a calling to me, like, I mm -hmm. got to get a hold of him. Like, we, I, this is what I've been kind of probably needing at, as well. Yeah. So um, I think it was just... God puts things in you know perspective for us, and it definitely brought us together. So I appreciate it. So I just want to make sure you know that because I think sometimes it gets forgotten. Because I know like 
Mm. We probably don't see the behind the scenes work that you're doing and the stuff that, yeah. you know, yeah. um, it, mm. when you talk to people, it kind of might rehash things for you as well, you know, because I know sometimes for me, like I'll talk to somebody that has been through it and I was thinking to myself, wow, I can remember doing that or maybe I, I didn't have it like that, but can I now? Like, am I having those? You know, so it does kind of work both ways where sometimes you kind of, I don't say can put you in a depression, but it can make you sometimes work in a in an area where you are around things that could make you feel that way, you know, in a sense. Yeah. So, but uh, it's been really positive, like for me, as far as the doors it's opened and the people I've talked to and uh, connected with and you know, for me, my story is, it's like really Alma's story because she's the one that <laughs> kept me alive to be able to share it. But if it can help one person, yeah, then I'll share it all I have to share it and I'll, and I'll keep sharing it, you know. So it's important to get that out there. I think it's healthy for some to share. It's not for everybody. I get it. Some mm. people are, you know, no, I'm, I'm done with talking about it. Or I don't want to, but sure. I think it helps more than it hurts for sure. Yeah, yeah. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, thank Appreciate you for sh- for saying that actually, or for sharing that with me. Now that's that's actually awesome to hear. Yeah, that's really awesome. Good. So it's good to see a smile. I'm happy. To see that, so. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So your, I mean, you know, year has been challenging. If you had to say it in one sentence, mm-hmm. it sounds like it has been a really challenging year. Let me, you know throw one more or another question at you um Mm -hmm. is there actually anything that has gotten easier since the last time that we spoke um yeah so i don't like to use the word normal because i think it's like it's a trigger word for some people but it's let's just say that the word is required because that's what we're kind of all going towards is some kind of a normal i have way better good days than i do bad for sure and i'm able to do I feel like I'm able to live more with just things I struggled with, with like going to sporting events with my kids, watching things in crowds. You know, I, I still have challenges with it at times, but I'm able to do it. And mm. so overall, there's the positive of it is I feel like my life is going forward and I am seeing myself do things that I probably back in the year I looked at it like, wow, that's so far away to think about going on a road trip or uh, you know, even like visiting family that's far, like I thought like, oh, I'm never going to make it to the house. But now it's like, you know, I can see myself doing that. And I, I want yeah. to now, like I'm, I feel that not that I can't, I can, which hmm. um, that feels good. So yeah, that's a positive. I think I'm definitely having better good days than bad days. Okay, awesome. I mean, there has been yeah. then real progress. That's really good to see actually, right? Or to feel. Yes. And it's been, you know, therapy helps a ton. Mm-hmm. I, I always encourage that to people that it's um, good to talk to a third party that doesn't know you and doesn't have an opinion other than honest opinion, because we all know, you know, family loves you. So they're going <laughs> to tell you what they feel like. They're not going to hurt you. Right. Of course. Yeah. And that yeah even yeah. becomes with the spouse or girlfriend or whatever they're, yeah. they, they, you can say things to a limit. Um, but it's always nice to have somebody that is just looking at it from the outside in and can give you, whether it's techniques to help, mm-hmm. references, um, pat you on the back. Because I'll be honest with you, I needed that a lot because I would come into the therapy session mad at the world. <laughs> and then they would stop yeah. me in my tracks and go, OK, let's look at what you have done yeah. and have accomplished mm-hmm. opposed to what you're not doing. And then you're like, oh, you know what? You're right. And those help you a lot that it's again we are the worst critics on ourselves we really are and you throw sudden cardiac arrest in the middle of it it just messes everything up yeah. there isn't a, there isn't a, a like a, a a cheat sheet or a, a guide or an outline to deal with that because i no. know um unless you see somebody who has therapy that's actually gone through sudden cardiac arrest, one of the first things they're going to say is like, well, I don't know exactly what you've been through, but we do deal with trauma or we've dealt with PTSD Mm -hmm. and these things is what we, and and you kind of connect the dots. You realize that, oh, my PTSD might've been triggered by the sudden cardiac event, but some people's had it from a car accident or military. And, you know, there's so many different ways you can deal with it. I think the key is though, is identifying it, like really knowing that you need it. Like you need the help, you're struggling 
talk to somebody or yeah. reach out or something, you know, because you don't want to doing things alone can be very dangerous in, in general, but you, you do True. sometimes need that outside resources to kind of help you with things and put a light on it, I think is the best way to really look at it. Somebody needs to put a light on the situation yeah. to where you see like, okay, I am doing some positives and I am having some things that are negative, but the positives are moving me. And that's what I need to concentrate on and work on. And uh, I don't know, like, I, I will say one thing that's changed a lot in life from after having some, my patience <laughs> with a lot of things is way shorter than it used to be. And sometimes that overlaps to loved ones because mm. I see things in the public today and I shake my head and I go, man, I wish they would realize how precious life truly is and how much time they're wasting with negative energy. And then I sometimes spiral it to a, somebody who is a friend or a loved one, and I look at them the same way, and I say something completely out of line, and I think to myself, oh, I'm sorry, but I don't have time for that like anymore yeah. in my life. I don't dwell on those type of things. And that's a hard adjustment because yeah. it's not a matter of being rude. It's just a matter of being real about it. Yeah. Like you do really – we get to peek behind the curtain, and mm -hmm. we do realize that life is a snap of the fingers – and it's really precious, you know. Actually, many uh, cardiac arrest survivors that I had on the show mentioned this as well, that their lack of patience mm -hmm. on things like this has shortened as well. And which, in a way, you could say makes a lot of sense, right? We were mm -hmm. so close to never being here again. So why Absolutely. waste yeah, time on things that don't matter and that much? And it's funny because the word waste is such a trigger word. And it's kind of, I get why people would get mad if you said that to them. I would be mad like if I didn't have it and somebody told me that they had it. I'd be like, oh, okay, so I, apparently I'm not important to you. Mm. But at the same time, we look at things so different in life. Because even though when we go to sleep, we know we're probably going to wake up the next morning, right? Percentages are you are. We all know that, <laughs> right? But when you take a moment to see something and you look at it, there's a part of the back of your mind that tells you this might be the last time I might see that. So I'm going to take it in yeah, just because I want to because I just you don't know. Right. And that's a very powerful thing because it, it fuels a lot of gratitude, yeah. but it also feels a lot of, of fear and anger. And, you, you know, you, you you look back at old pictures and see things and you're like, oh, like, I, I wish I, I want to be there. I want to do that. And it's like, well, am I going to be able to? And then mm. you think to yourself, well, I at least did. And I can when the time's right. You know? Yeah. And that's important to know that. Like, it, and, and you know what? You're going to do it. And it's going to be a thousand times better than the first time. Because you're going to mm. see it under this new this new light. You're going to be like, uh, I'll just reference it like seeing the Grand Canyon. Now, it's one of the most beautiful, natural things you could see. It's unbelievable and i could tell you right now if i went to go see it today i would stand there and be in tears mm -hmm. because i would think to myself how beautiful this is that i'm allowed this extra time to enjoy yeah. that and that's a powerful thing to say and really think about because it is true it's not me just putting it on a you know a t-shirt it's that's the mm -hmm. way the cards were dealt with me in my life to see things now is that it's just such a treat to have this bonus time and I hope it's a long bonus time. You know, I don't Same know. For I mean, you, I, we definitely. all, you know, yeah. it could be, it could be anything. But I just hope that I appreciate it and 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 earn everything afterwards, and don't take advantage of it. You know, and there's going to be days where, yeah, you're in no mood, and you you look at because you know I'm a I'm I'm a journaler, so I like to like recap some of my things and catch things that have gratitude, and I you know I'll put it in the journal, and I'll look at the end of the day, and I'll think to myself. I didn't put anything really much positive, but then I think, okay, well, that was what today was. Like now I see that and I can go to bed with a positive and, you know, and I can't, I, I'm not, I did not create this, so I can't take credit for it. But I, I remember hearing that somebody said that the, we have so many thoughts in a day. Mm -hmm. It's like thousands and thousands. Right. And the only one we really can control is the first in the morning and the last at night. And that's really the two that right. we can actually get up in the morning positive, yeah. even yeah. though it might be a five second positive, And then all of a sudden you look at your phone and you're like, oh, you know, the date, but yeah. it's still that moment. And you can do the same thing before you go to bed, you know, and I've used that a lot in 
therapy for myself has been gratitude. I'm, I, 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 you know, I share them every once in a while with the photos just because I feel like if somebody sees something, maybe it helps their day, you know. Um, but it, there are true moments in my life that I take a pause, and I'm mm. really, really, truly grateful for being allowed to have the second time, and having extra time opposed to not having it is a hard thing to process but it's a beautiful thing you know and as you know it's not always rainbows and flowers there's days where you're sitting there going really is this what my life is going to look like for the next yeah whatever yeah. years i've got but at least we're here to take those challenges on and yeah hey we survived something that 90 percent of the people don't you know and we kind of sometimes forget that because we're in communities where the, everybody there is majorly survivors. And we see like their stories and we hear, and then every once in a while one will come in there where it's like, I lost so-and-so to sudden cardiac arrest. And it's really like a gut check because you're like, mm. wow, most people aren't surviving. And hopefully we're improving on that number. We're all, everybody's trying to do their best to improve on that number. But the majority of people still, they don't make it. And no. That's and you don't hear from them because they're you know, gone, right? So, yeah. Exactly. And usually the family members, some of them yeah. stay active and want to still be in, but most deal with it because they don't want to see the other stories. And they kind of, yeah. go, you know, they, they, some share it, which I love to see because I think it's strong to do that, you know, and it is, you always have to know the other side because that's mm -hmm. the reality of it all is that the majority, you know, you look at 10 people nine of them are going to drop and not be saved or be in a situation where they can't be saved. And that one person's going to be the one that either was in the right place or the right time or all of the above. And they had the right equipment to keep them going. And that's, I'll tell you a quick story. We, when the lottery gets high around here, I'm like any other fool. I try to, you know, okay, I'm going to play it. Why not? And my son, <laughs> he's 12 and he uh -huh. goes, Hey, what would you do if you did win the lottery? Uh -huh. And I kind of stopped and I looked at him and I said, well, technically I already did because I'm alive. Yeah. And he's, he goes, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, my odds were like yours is stacked against us to survive and we're here. So mm -hmm. I did win the lottery in a sense, but this is just fun. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I don't know what I would do if I would win all that money. I, I would probably freak out. But at the same time, I'm already <laughs> grateful for yeah, yeah. being alive. Right. Yeah. Of something that I, you really statistically shouldn't have survived. Yeah. You know, um, and he laughed. And he goes, yeah, I guess you're right. I, I don't, he, you know, he's 12. So he's kind of like, I don't think of it that way, but I guess you did defy the odds. And I said, well, I did with a lot of help. It was, again, it's really not my story. It's more Alma's story. But yes, when you look at it, the percentages were stacked against me the moment I lost consciousness mm. and I was basically dying, you know, or died in a sense. So, but it was weird when I think about that because I remember later on when I really sat there and thought about it and I think, wow, it is true. We kind of all won the lottery of life by getting a, a solid second chance to keep going, try and get to a place where we're happy, mm. pushing through things, making achievements, taking time to identify those achievements because we sometimes don't do that, right? We're always do something and it's like, okay, great. I did this today. Well, you didn't do it for like three or four weeks because you couldn't. And now you're doing it. That's a celebration. Celebrate that. You know, be happy that uh, you, you had a day where you didn't have uh, anxiety or a nervousness to something that should be going to a store or waiting in line for something or whatever your situation is that triggers you to have those moments where you just completely freak out. Now they're slowly becoming further apart. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. And if you are having them, you get help. Work on it. Work on it. Work, and you will progressively yeah. push through those things. It, it just patience and p persistence is huge. And it's frustrating because it's simple things we used to take for granted every single day. You know, we all look at our life prior to and think, man, I could just hop in the car and just take off and. I had no worry world, at all. You know? And now it's, yeah. yes. And uh -huh. now you take off and you're like, okay, where am I going? Do I have my pills? Am I going to be yeah, gone? Yeah, yeah. You know, like you have all these things, but it's like, okay, but that's my life now. And that's okay because yeah. I'm still alive to do that. And that's, that's mm. precious. Press, I'm going to ruin that real precious. It's, it's very valuable to have that. Yep. 
Great, thank you. <laughs> Very valuable to have that, and and I think it's important to hold on to that um, because we we do need encouragement. We're human. We mm -hmm. we 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 struggle. We can get mad. We can get angry. We can blame this and blame that. But we're all alive to be able to go through those things, and that's important to concentrate on that. I think um, it kind of gets lost in translation with a lot of things going on with the, even the, within the community you see people mm -hmm. struggling and the first thing that they do is they go why am i doing this why am i feeling this way why am i having this is this normal are you guys you know and it's like it is you know mm -hmm. it's okay it, it's good that you're sharing because maybe that'll help you find the right answers but don't feel like you're wrong to have those yeah. those thoughts and those ideas and those struggles so yeah i mean i question, i i think yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I wrote, I don't know, like a post a couple of days ago on Instagram, basically just saying that, you know, I climbed a lot of mountains some years ago, um, before all this, still intend to do that when things get a bit better. But um, mm -hmm. there, the philosophy of just applying it, it just every step counts. I just applied that when I was climbing mountains, because every step you're getting closer to the top, even as small as it is. And I kept repeating that in my head when it was getting really tough when I was climbing. And I am applying that technique now with this, that every step counts, you know, every doctor appointment, every information that you're getting and learning more about all this, it does count to getting closer to, well, I mean, a top, well, there's no per se end or finish line or top. Mm -hmm. But at least you are advancing and you are getting higher with better understanding and, and a better quality of life, hopefully, as well. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a good thing to repeat sometimes that, in your head that every step right, counts. And that's, a, and that's a good thing to concentrate on, too. Look at from our year conversation to where we are now, just how much we've educated ourselves into what we yeah. went through. Yep. And that's crucial, like to be able yeah. to feel confident enough now that you can go see your doctor, ask the right yep. questions, don't feel yeah. like I should, should I ask that? And it's like, if you got a question, you ask, you got notes, you give them, you, you say them because we have the right to know that we're getting the right treatment in general, but mm -hmm. we also have the right to know that why am I getting this? Why are you looking at this? You know, yep. why is this number concerning, you know, type of thing, because we want to know like honestly like when i heard about like the whole thing about like pvcs i i have no clue what they're even talking about and then you know they gave me some information they kind of explained it again you know when you talk about cardiac lingo it's so complicated sometimes to put there's acronyms and all yeah you know, you're yeah. just kind of like yeah. and i you know and they, i said give me a good source to look at that you would want me to look at you know and they mm -hmm. a lot of times i'll say like mayo clinic mayo clinics obviously world yep. renowned you know and when you start reading stuff and you learn about things and you realize, okay, now I kind of get it. Now I understand why when those happen, my heart does what it does. And now I understand why my settings on my ICD are the way they're set, you know, and that is all relief in your mind to know, okay, I am on the right track. I am getting the right treatment. I'm getting the right medicine. And it might be harder for others to get there because of their diagnosis and things that are happening. But as long as you feel like you're getting the right answers and the right treatment, ultimately you will get to that point where you're going to be able to go and climb those mountains and feel okay yeah, with yeah. it, you know? And yeah, feel, you're better yeah, equipped. It's just getting there. Yeah. Yes. And we're all really impatient, right? Because you probably like to climb that mountain like this weekend. You know? Yeah, you want to run it up. It's like, you want to run it up and be on the top yeah, already. Right? But exactly. That's impossible. And it's like, well, it is right now. Yeah. But there's going to be a time where it's going to be possible. And, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Again, with the right equipment yeah, and, and, and gotta, equipment yes. is here the right information and, and just better understanding about everything yeah. is the right equipment for those mountains often. Absolutely. Yeah, and you're going to – I like the fact, too, that you use the analogy of mountain climbing in your recovery of your life, too, because it means it's something very passionate to you. And that that's <laughs> yeah. nice to hear because I think that's important, you know, like um, – having a goal of something that really means it's a huge achievement for you. I mean, and it doesn't have to be necessarily climbing a mountain, but even sure. just being able to go on your daily walks and come home and feel okay. That's a huge win, you know? Um, so I, I think that whole moving forward is important 
understandably that it's going to come with a struggle, you know, as well. I think that's like a lesson learned by all of us in within time that um, I, I mean, we see stories, I mean, Jasmine, I think 15 years out, you know, and she's so good about getting the information out there and all that information she's learning is because of the things that she's gone through are the things she took time to research. And I think that's very commendable because, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things I like her website I looked at and I was like, oh, I don't know if I would be able to gather that equip that information like that, you know, and but that's like her calling to do and it helps others. And I and I, that's the greatness of this community is we are trying the website to website that each she, other, in a sense. she started with some other people, you, you mean, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how I is it called again? Uh, um, hearts. Hearts. M- some. Min- no. I'm gonna feel oh. bad because I. Yeah. It's same. Not my favorites. I actually... Um. I'm gonna feel it. <laughs> it's a great web, and I'm looking for it right now because I know she's heart shares sites? a lot of stuff from is it. it. Heart sites. And that might be. I apologize oh, I feel so if bad now for that too. We're gonna look like goofball. A hearts. Oh, heart it... site. You're right. Yeah. Heart, yeah. Heart yeah. Site. Okay. There we go. You're, so yeah, I actually, right. I also because it's a great resource. Actually, even though that we almost it forgot is. the name, um, it's a great <laughs> resource for everyone listening, uh, and I will also mm-hmm. put it in the show notes. Uh, heart sites. Our heart site dot com is the website, but I'll put it in the show notes and also the episode with. Uh, Jasmine, because she's uh, such an amazing inspiration for me as well, and for many people, right? Because like you said, she's been out yeah. there for 50 years after surviving a cardiac arrest, and she seemed to be doing great. I mean, as as far yeah. as I can tell, right? Um, right. Very knowledgeable. Like getting the information out there, yeah. That, yeah. Like you can definitely feel confident when you talk to her about something yeah. that she either has researched it or been there and done it herself, or both, you know, and... That's really comforting, and it's nice that she's willing to share that. Which I, I again, that's such a gift to have a person like that out there, you know. And I, uh, the other one too is like heart charged. Those that with their, oh, yeah, what they're, they're doing, and uh, the, the two girls so active. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, Bethany and Hannah. Uh, they're good. Yes. They're really awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you were also a bit more involved the, in what they did, right? Or they interviewed you yeah, or they something? Yeah, they shared or? my. No, they just story. shared my story. They, we, yeah, we, we were kind of like messaging back and forth, and they brought up October being Cardiac Awareness yeah. a Month, and uh, I said, you know, they offered if I could, you know, if they could do my. Of course, like I'm like ancient to them. They're you know, they're, they're like <laughs> social media, you know, and I'm like, sure, uh, I can. You want to give me what you want? Because I'll send you like this probably ten page. You, yeah, so they gave me some questions and answered, and they just this beautiful post that was been out there and shared yeah. and you know so i i couldn't be more thankful and it was yeah. really on their end to initiate it i just provided the information and the picture i mean that was really my my role in it and uh i thought it was nice that they did that because um i like we've switched from before but for me like my story is for me to share mm. to help others and um i'll keep telling it as long as somebody wants to listen to it on yeah. the road that I went from the day it happened to where I'm at right now. Um, and if it helps somebody, great. If it gives them another opportunity to say, hey, look, this guy had it while he was driving. Mm-hmm. There are people that have it in situations that they're afraid of, you know, because I do know that that's one of the fears a lot of people have post cardiac arrest is driving in general. They worry about what happens if I get shocked while I'm operating a vehicle or you know, whatever situation. And it, it, I guess it kind of deviates that to know like, well, there are people who had actual cardiac arrest without a device and survived. Granted, my situation would be perfect to have that happen, but it does happen mm. to people, you know? So, mm. but uh, yeah. Well, I'm so glad. Casa for... is another one. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I was just yeah. saying, Casa is another good one. They have some great, great webinars and uh, yes. yeah. great information out there as, as well. And they've got survivors out there 20 plus years and have an mm. active community of doing things as well. So there's a, there's help out there, information out there, you know, and just getting it out there to help out is passing it around is important. I think kind of collaborating yeah. as much as we can. Definitely. Get the yeah. There's a couple of new people. ones like the Casa and the uh, heart site, right? Yeah. yeah uh, there's a couple of new ones one that exactly that's good to see. 
did I die? I think there's one like that as well, where it's like the, it's another Facebook page and it's a little more personal, f- more for survivors. Ah, okay. Did I die? Which is a good one. I think it's a, again. I'm gonna look like a goof when they look this when they watch it because <laughs> you just click on things. I never memorized anything, but it's it's a. Oh, but did you die? And then sudden cardiac arrest, survivors only. I think that's the one, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ah, that's okay. a good one as well. It's a little more, ah, most, cool. a little more okay. personal because it's mostly, you know, it is actual um, survivors of cardiac arrest. Kind of like how they have some co-survivors where it's just strictly co-survivors. Um, mm. But it, it's all starting and getting mm-hmm. more information out there and finding it and passing it on and sharing it. So I... I I think that's the key to all of us living life forward post sudden cardiac mm. arrest, you know, is to Agree. have a community work together. And I, I'm glad we did this because of the fact that it's a good check in for a year. And I'm looking forward to seeing myself now. Yeah. Opposed to what I was before. Not that there was any wrong with that before, but I, I do know and I can tell just by our conversation is there's a lot more uh, positives. Mm -hmm. And it was me kind of talking about things that I was going through at that time. So, um, and there's some things in there that's real Mm because I don't, I'm not a sugar, I don't sugarcoat things. I, I'm true. You want the truth. You talk to me because I, I, that's how I've always (laughs) been, but I'm not going to be, and I'm not going to be rude though. Like I'll do it in a nice way, but I, I'm the type of person that if something needs to be said, I'll say it. And I'm not going to lie to a person because I'm afraid of hurting their feelings because if they're talking to me they trusted me so yeah. i need to be honest with them as well you know so well i important. appreciate but yeah the honesty that you've shared here you know in this conversation and uh yeah again the resources that you just mentioned i will link them up in the show notes for everyone listening uh jamie we've been talking for a bit you know um could throw so many more questions at you there's so many more things that <laughs> well, you probably haven't shared but Yes. Let me throw one just last question at you, Mm -hmm. you know, to sort of close off the conversation. And that's mainly just, or that's basically, is there just a a last thing that you still want to share? Is there just something that's still on your mind? Something that you, yeah, want to share with me or anyone listening? Um, Well, I think the last time we did this, I talked about not wanting sudden cardiac arrest to define me, right? It was, I wanted to be in control of the sudden cardiac arrest. And I think that I still stand by that as being important, but I do also believe in the fact that you have to be honest with yourself. That's so important is to know your limitations at that time, but know that in another time that limitation is going to be gone because you're just going to move right past it. And it's important to know that. And it's important to keep that focus of being moving forward on no matter what setbacks get you. Uh, Like I I could look at this past year and finding out that I had another event, knock me back to where I first left that hospital room. But I just kind of felt like, okay, I got to get through this. I got to move past it. I got to keep going. I got to, and that's, that would be my one thing I would tell Anybody that's gone through it, whether it's the day you leave or you're a year out, 10 years out, whatever it is, is that moving forward is really what's important um, health, healthy wise. You know, uh, you want to do it in the right way. But moving forward is the key to life post, again, the new normal. I'm air quoting because I the word normal, but the new normal of the new person that you are after you kind of. So a good friend of mine said that we almost need to have a service for the old person because you kind of need to bury them because that's the old you before right. and this is the new you afterwards. That's Joe huh. Fisher. So I'm going to give him credit for it because he's the one. Oh, yeah. I had that. him on the show um, here too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All he, right. He, he Shout out to that him. in the conversation. Yeah. It's so awesome. a beautiful way to it's and we would only understand that if you told yeah. that to somebody who didn't go through something character rest, they'd be like, wow, that's it really would be like dark. weird. That's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, no, it's actually true because yeah. you really kind of have to bury that old person uh, aside and move forward to this new person you are today and you're going to be for the rest of your life because you're not... That could actually be a really gonna... beautiful thing to do in a way, to let go of your past self and, and mm-hmm. to release maybe a lot of sadness that we're holding on to. That could be a really beautiful thing actually to do with a couple of people who had also cardiac arrest. I don't know. 
Yeah, okay. And That's it, okay. It's, cool idea. Uh, it's a great statement. And Joe said it, so I can't take credit for it. But it sunk with me when the way he brought that up. And I thought to myself, like, yeah, you have to remember that person is somebody completely different than what you were. And maybe there's glimpses of things you might do that you remember prior, but you're, you're really doing things differently afterwards. It's a new, fresh slate in a sense, you know, and that's hard to admit to some because I think I, I was guilty of it too, especially initially, like I kept wanting to see like, oh, I'm going to be like that old Jamie that could do this and do that. And, and I'd Same. stop from doing it and I would get mad yeah. at myself and like, what is wrong? But that's because yeah. of the fact that you're starting differently now and yeah. it's not the same as the person you were prior to sudden cardiac arrest so mm. i think that makes sense yeah yeah I, yeah absolutely. i think that's what i would it's a that's a huge thing to remember and just be be kind to yourself be okay with struggles and having fears and having questions about things that you think are off the wall ask them um mm -hmm. educate yourself the best you can with good sources of course but you know just sure push forward with all that you can and things will happen because i th i really truly think that's the point where you're at where you feel like you're not gonna go anywhere with it and it's like as soon as little things start moving forward next thing you yeah. know more things happen and now you're looking back and you're like man i remember that time when i couldn't even go to the grocery store without having a, a you know a episode of nerves or uh ptsd would keep me from you know just leaving the house in general you know and it's like now you do something and you don't give yourself credit for it and it's like that's a heck of an accomplishment mm. so reward yeah. yourself every once in a while pat yourself on the back and be positive because it does rub off on other areas when you're positive about things you know so and don't forget about your co-survivors they're important Agreed. they have to be along with the journey a hundred percent they have to be along with the journey it, especially if it's a spouse or a girlfriend boy yeah. whatever a loved one there they have to be in the loop as much as possible because they're going through their own stuff they're also watching us with a magnifying glass because they see they saw us at our worst you know and they want to make sure we're doing things healthy now for ourselves and mm -hmm. they also themselves are making adjustment to the new you and I, you know, after the situation, yeah, and that's a yeah. heck of an adjustment, you know. So you you can't forget about them. I probably should have started with that one, but I, at least I didn't forget because it yeah, is huge. But the coast it, of yeah, yeah, they often get forgotten by not just you know by the people outside too, right? You know, we get a lot of attention, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, yeah. uh, which makes sense, right? Something terrible happened to us, but to them as well. And uh, yeah, it's maybe a good reminder for me now as well to hear this mm -hmm. to, yeah, think about them too. I think uh, more, Joe, more often. You know, Joe Farrell, he's real big with Casa. He says it the best when he talks about a story. He always says, it's not my story. It's mm -hmm. my wife's story because his co-survivor is his wife. And it's like, you know yeah. what? He's absolutely right. It, yeah. We are really just carrying on the story that they provided us by doing what they did and then everybody there afterwards so you it's a good reminder of that so you don't forget because that's important because i think like you said co-survivors definitely are on an island on their own sometimes and they kind of get swept under the rug because they see us as the star because we're the ones that it happened to but really we aren't we're like barely the supporting cast <laughs> we're just the after so, part of it you know we're the, you know yeah <laughs> You know, I call this project the Heart Warrior Project because that's what we are. We're warriors, you know, yeah. dealing with this. Absolutely. But the people who saved us, they're the heroes. We're the warriors and they're the heroes, you know. They saved lives, they saved this life, and we're the ones now battling on with all this. So I always feel like my girlfriend who, who saved me, she's the hero in the story, and I'm mm -hmm. the warrior <laughs> going on now. Yeah. fighting with this and the same for you right and it, yeah and, and we forget that at times that they're along for that ride because we feel like yeah. we're the only ones experiencing it and it's really uh, sometimes i think our struggles are even harder on them than it is on ourselves and we don't always see that and i i, I will be honest with you i talked to a few people whether their co-survivors are in the the home or you know in a lot of times they don't ever even talk to them about it. They kind of just all move on. 
Mm-hmm. And they never really sit down together, whether it's through therapy or just a yeah. conversation and really just it's important. talk about yeah yeah what what very important what yeah what do you think after what happened or what are you seeing right now that's going on in me from the outside you know and those that's those are hard conversations you know they're they're not easy and not Mm -hmm. everybody is an open book to want to talk Mm -hmm. about things but it it's you can't forget that yeah they're very important to be along the ride and we get to you know when you I know that you haven't met the first responders yet, but like when you meet the first responders, like for me, like when I met the the police officer and the fire department, they're getting like their reward is to see me. Their work saved my life, but they're going to do that to hundreds from that point on. Knock on wood, Alma will never have to do that again to anybody. You know, I hope I would, I really hope she never. Started, but she had to do it once, and that's mm. one time too many in a sense. That's when you too, think about yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. That's that's a lot, like for a person to take it on and have to carry that. So, um, yeah. I, I I really that's actually I'm glad I thought about that when we were talking about that. Like the co survivors are very important to remember yeah. in all Absolutely. of this because they easily do get forgotten, and it's like anything in life. It's not healthy when you don't communicate, right? Isn't that like the first thing people say in like counseling with couples is, did you guys talk about this? And it's like, yeah, communication. Well, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? or you did when you were arguing yeah. and it came out all wrong yeah. or, you know, so, but it's important to have that, you know, yeah. and, and not forget it, but it's also easy to forget it. Cause we got a lot on our plates too, you know, of um, course, right. We shouldn't be hard now yeah. on ourselves that it's sometimes, yeah. yeah, that we need reminded of that, but thank you for reminding me for everyone listening about that as well. Yeah. Jamie, That's thank important. you for, you know, for taking the time here to sit again down with me and to do this conversation and to share, you know, all that has happened or parts of what has happened since the last time that we talked. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. I like being the first of everything for you. That's, I think that's my role. <laughs> is yeah. Whatever we're doing for the first time, I'm I'm always game to do it. Um, awesome. So it awesome. was nice to have a, a catch yeah. up like this. I think it, it was healthy for both of us to talk again and i mean we do yeah. communicate but you know face to face it's different like the face to face we can do because we're, we're you know, yeah. distancing yeah. but it's uh it's nice to see you and know that Same. okay we're all doing okay we're here yeah you know? we're still here thing so yeah. yeah yes exactly so but i appreciate it thank you and that concludes my conversation with cardiac arrest survivor and heart warrior, Jamie Bowden. I hope that you gained something out of this episode. Uh, maybe that you found some meaning, value, or some support here in this conversation. And as always, to find any of the resources mentioned by me or by Jamie, then check out the show notes, which you can find in the description of this episode. Or if you can't find them there, you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for Jamie. With that, uh, maybe I get to welcome you again on another episode here on the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. This is Yelis Fass, signing off. Oh, and, uh, you know, get one of those. They're really comfy, especially now when the weather is getting a little bit less uh warm i personally i wear this one all the time and you can find them on the heart warrior project Uh, also in the description i will put a link uh, to find them before you go i uh, just like to remind you of the heart warrior t-shirts and mugs i've created together with an illustrator if you're looking for a fitting t-shirt or mug that will not only show the battle you fought and are still fighting but also something for yourself to wear and use that will make you feel empowered. These t-shirts and mugs will be a great addition to your life. It certainly has been true for me. Additionally, you will also be supporting the Heart Warrior Project, which will help me to keep this project running. Now, if the t-shirts or mug doesn't speak to you, but you want to support the project, we also accept donations. You can find more info about all this by going to the description of this episode. There you can find a link to where you can order the t-shirts and mugs as well as other ways to support this project or you can go directly to heartwarriorproject.com to find this information.